I don't usually talk about topics like this, but just something about this story was so unsettling, I had to say something. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. I hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today we're talking about a topic that is very, very tragic. Uh, something sinister happened. If you don't know, Shanquilla Robinson and five of her friends, we're gonna get into that in the end, went to Kabul. Imagine going to Kabul. Now imagine coming back a day late. How is it six people went, but only five returned? As the story goes, they went to her mom's house to say that she passed away within 24 hours of being there due to alcohol poisoning. They brought back her belongings, but they left her body. Now, as if that wasn't convoluted enough, there's confounding facts. The Mexican government says it's alcohol poisoning. The friends say it's alcohol poisoning, but her mom paid an exorbitant amount of money to have the body brought back and had their own autopsy done showing that she actually died from severe spinal injuries and a broken neck to make things even more strange video came out i don't know who's feeling guilty at the villa but someone leaked a video of a fight that happened the first day pause let's just talk about twitter for a second because this month twitter has really tried it i don't know why there isn't like a cloud or a blurred out version or are you sure you want to watch this sometimes i'm scrolling the timeline i'm seeing things that i didn't want to see and i just i don't know how twitter gets away with that no other social media site does that but some of the things i've seen on twitter especially recently has literally made me lose sleep so there's a video on twitter of Shanquilla and another girl that was in the villa getting into a fight. Some people are speculating this fight is what led to her death. Of course, the person who fought her said that ain't it. Everything is very sketchy. Something sinister happened. There is no way that you go from alcohol poisoning to death by broken neck and severe spinal injuries. Something isn't adding up. I don't understand how you leave a country to go celebrate in another country and get into conflict like this. I don't know about you guys, but I work too hard for my money. I'm not gonna pack up, get travel items, pay for a flight, go to Cabo, which I know everyone always says Dominican Republic, Cuba, and Mexico are cheap, but Cabo is not cheap. Go all the way there for me to get in a fight in the first day? No, sorry, not me. I know we live in the era of recording things, it's just so strange that whenever something happens in life, people take out their phones instead of taking action. You can even hear someone in the background saying, get up and fight. She didn't want to fight. This is a very scary situation to be in and we need to get clear about who's in our circle. Sometimes the people we have in our inner circle aren't supposed to be there. Even if they've been there for years, we got to move them out to the outer circle or vice versa. We can know someone for a couple months or a year and they show us more authenticity than someone we've known for decades. I know when these topics come up, everyone gets into queen cut them all mode or king cut them off mode. But at the end of the day, it's not about being a loner or being jaded to the point where you don't make connections because that's what life is about. It's about making connections and feeling that sense of community. It's also about choosing wisely. And I always say when things like this happen, we can't make sense of it, but we can make use out of it. And the only way we can make use out of something like this is if each and every one of us looks at the situation and says to ourselves, how are we going to look at our circle and be more intentional? Do we have to use more discernment? Should we watch their movements? If someone shows us who they are, do we believe them? Everyone always uses that quote. I wanna take it a step further and say, how often do you look at how someone treats you and say, okay, I'm gonna act accordingly. It's not a petty thing. It's realizing that you have a place in somebody else's life. And if you see that and you perceive that, you should act based on that. I'm not saying to not give 110 because someone's giving 80. If you're that person, be your authentic self. We talk about that all the time on the Patreon pod. I'm saying that if someone shows you where you are in their life, don't put them on a pedestal. Bring it back, ooh, not that. Back to this strange situation that could have been avoided. So many things are running through my mind. Are these all faux friends? Are they friends for the gram? Was there a best friend there? Why didn't anyone step in? Why was this okay? Personally, me, if I'm paying money to go to a villa with other people, I don't want any conflicts around me. Even if I'm not involved, I didn't pay for that. That kind of energy looms and lingers around. 
Everything about it seemed strange. Was it the maid or the nurse that found them? Was it the maid that called the nurse to pronounce the girl dead? And if she was dying, why didn't anyone call for help? And if they did, why aren't the records there? The Mexican government said that it was alcohol poisoning, but the mom and the FBI say it was not. All of these things are going to come out eventually in the future, but all I do know now is that this was sad, unfortunate, and avoidable. I know we live in the era of clicking up and looking good for the look or being with a certain group of people because they have the resources, whether it be money or time, to do the things we want to do. That can't be at all. And if it is, call it out for what it is, but don't put yourself in situations, and I hope none of us have ever been in anything this drastic, I will say, though, we've all had moments in life where it shows us who someone really is or where we stand in their lives. It's up to us in those moments for us to decide how we are going to show up for ourselves. It's not selfish. It's self-interest. And in cases like this, it is a life and death decision. When it comes to this topic, I've touched on it before on this channel, and maybe that's why it disturbs me so much. The fake friends or toxic positivity, people who are not really there for you or seeing the signs but deciding to look past them. I... Don't mind cutting people off. Sad to say, I've come to a place where if you show me who you are enough times, that's enough for me. I won't cut you off the first time, but I will take notes. With that said, it's up to you to decide where you draw the line. Is it when they do one thing wrong? Is it when they do 10 things wrong? Is it when they look at you sideways? Is it when they don't celebrate your successes? As much as someone can beat you down literally, they can also be in the background bringing you down figuratively. I believe in energies, and I don't mean to get too woo-woo with it, but think about it. If you are obtaining things, reaching goals, getting to pinnacles of success, whatever that means for you, and there's someone in your court that doesn't desire that for you too, that energy will erode you. No matter what, it'll be the sideway comments they make or the snide remarks, or the little bits of discouragement, or uncertainty, or seeds of, are you sure? Are you really, really sure? And don't get me wrong, it's good to have that friend that gives you the grounding to say, let's be realistic with it. But I've had situations, and I'm sure you have too, hopefully you don't, but most of us have, where someone who's supposed to be there for you clearly wasn't there for you, either in support, or in a time of need, or when you were trying to access something or elevate yourself, they want you to stay where you are. You moving up shows them that they can't do what they need to do in their lives. It's not about comparison. Comparison is a thief of joy. It's more about this feeling where a lot of people, especially people who've come up around the same age or for a long time, when one seems to elevate at a faster stage in whatever they're doing, it doesn't even have to be the same lane. Someone down below internalizes that. Maybe they're having issues themselves with their growth. I could go in, and you guys know if you know me how deep I get to go in these types of things. I'm just sharing this to say that we need to be so mindful about what company we keep and also what the hierarchy is. There's a difference between an acquaintance a colleague, a companion, a close friend, a regular regular friend, a best friend. And these names and titles and labels can change as needed. You don't have to say this is my best friend because I've known them since I was five. Maybe since five they've been tormenting you or maybe they've been the best thing that's happened to you or maybe it's a combination of the both but it's up to you to actually sit down and reflect and say, have we added value to each other's lives? Does this relationship ignite me? inspire me or tire me which one is it not to say that we can only keep friends if they add benefit to our lives sometimes we're supposed to be the pillar in their lives and that's where we get our benefit if someone's constantly draining or dragging us though that's a no that is a no 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 let me tell you no no actually i have videos if you want to click over here of all the times that i've dealt with toxic friendships Everything from snide remarks to who said I couldn't do something, who've tried to take advantage of me or the situation, who've made comments about trauma I've been through and brought up other things. And I'm like, whoo, that's what you think about me? Well then, no did. I've had the friends that have lied, the friends that have swindled, the friends that have 
left me in precarious situations in different countries. So when I talk from personal experience, I'm still not at the other end of the spectrum of no friends or no new friends. I'm still open to having good connections, but I'm more streamlined to being aligned with the values that matter to me in my life. And that's what I wish for you. Find friends that are true to themselves so they can be true to you. I don't know who these people are. I don't know if they were together for the look, if it's a ratchet crew and that's why they record each other's fights or what. I don't know if they're close or they're acquaintances. All I do know is this didn't have to go down. Friendships are supposed to be fun, not a whole mess, not ending in tragedy like this. It's just, it's just a lot to take in how crazy this world has become or has always been. It's just more apparent with social media, I suppose. All I do know is we got to be more vigilant. We got to be more vigilant about the company we keep and about staying true to ourselves. So that's all I got to say for this one. If there's anything you want to add, anything you've heard, anything you've experienced, you want to share, put it down below. If you haven't already subscribed for more videos, I don't usually do topics like this. If anything on my public pods, I'll talk about something lighthearted. And on the Patreon pods, I use my own personal antidotes to share why you should or shouldn't, or maybe consider something differently. I never try to tell you guys how to live your lives. I just let you know, hey, this is the way I went and it's a no-go. Or you can try this and see if it works for you. But either way, anywho, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks as always for making it to the end of this one. Until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.